All right, so what we've got is <coughs> an app that has been quote-unquote completed, although we are at MVP, remember that? Uh, minimum Viable Product. We have created a product that is minimum. It's viable at this point, meaning it can do the minimum things that I want this project to do. I still had ideas about being able to share on social media or send emails and all of that, but I think our version right here that we've released is good enough to start off with. Let's say we have released it and it's been out for a month, six months, whatever. Let's say our app has existed out and people have downloaded it. Then we want to do a version two. What about if we learn some new code? We want to add new features? Let's talk, start to talk about adding a version two, even though our version one is not ready quite yet. We're going to have a day where we need to talk about uploading version two. So. Let's start to prep a little bit here. Um, the first thing is you need to go to your folder where you've got your app. <clears throat> go back to your app folder. copy before before that but uh, if this takes too long I'll skip this uh, so this this is going to be a project of a version 2 and what we'll need to do so uh, you don't have to do this yet let me tell you what what, what, what we would need to do while this preps uh, remember we would need to edit that config XML file again you don't need to edit it yet we'll do this eventually but if this was our new version we need to go back to our config file, change the version number. Let's say we would be doing version 2 with a new date. Again, you don't have to change this yet, but let's say we're doing this you know, in a few months. Let's say we're doing this in June, so we would change the version number. More importantly, we would change the Android version code to 2. That's the most important one. We could leave this still saying Android version 1 dot whatever, but we have to change the version code. The app stores will not accept your app unless you increment that with whole numbers. We submitted version 1 of our code, and whatever else we do here, even if we change one little thing, even if I, oops, I misspelled unofficial, I just realized it, and I corrected unofficial to be correct, and I resubmit this, I have to have a version 2 code. Every time you submit a new version to the app stores, no matter how minimal of a change, you need to increment the version code. 1, 2, 3, 99, 100, whatever. So we don't have to change this yet. We'll do it later. And then we have to think about this version number here. This, again, this is rather arbitrary, but we've got this number here like it's the major release. We have a central number here, like of a minor release, and then we have an even you know, more minor release there. So what we could do if we're going to do version 2 of our app, we definitely need to put an Android version code 2. And here, you know, I'm not really maybe going to increment the, the large number here. I'm not changing it so radically to be version 2. I'm going to add a new feature. Maybe here then I would add a 2, and then change the date here, June. 12th. So this change here is up to you. It, you can even keep it exactly the same. The app stores will not care. They will care on your version code. I wouldn't change anything else. You know, I'm still the same developer. It's still the same name of my app. I guess technically I can change the name of my app here. What I definitely don't want to change is the ID. When I go over to version 2 or 3 or 9 or 12, I want to keep the ID the same. It's the same app. This is how the app stores know to send version 2 to the people that have downloaded version 1. On their device, they've got something installed called com.smith.myapp. So you want to keep that ID name the same. You don't increment that to 1 and 2 and 3. That's a brand new app. That's the same app. So this would update automatically? Yes, at a certain point, Android activated auto updates. So then, by default, 
usually it will send the latest version of the app to the device. Sometimes people don't like that because they're on a limited data plan, let's say, and they go to their settings and turn it off. And then they manually want to go to the App Store and click Update. I've noticed on mine, some, device, some apps auto-update and some ask me to update. So um, it's going to depend on various factors, but the default is to auto-update. I'm not making any changes to my config file at the moment. But we would need to change that at some point. Does that make sense? I'll touch on it again. I'll touch on it again later, but does that make sense? Yes. What if you're changing something external to the program like your picture or something The different screenshots and all of that? Yeah. Do you have to change the version of it? No, not on that. Um, not on that one. It's the same binary, so we wouldn't have to resubmit that. We would go back to edit our listing, change those screenshots or the text or whatever, new bullet points maybe, and then just click update, and you don't need to submit a new version code because you're not submitting a new binary if you're a new APK file. <coughs> if you're only changing the assets of your app, you don't submit a new APK, so you just change it and then click Submit to change it. Okay, while I'm getting a copy of my app, here's what we're going to do. I want to add the features to add to, to send emails via my, my app or um, social sharing. Uh, I want to tweet from my app. Uh, this is becoming more common with many types of apps. Like, let's say I just uh, I just bought something on Amazon recently, and it says, "Why not share it with your friends and family on Twitter or Facebook?" I want to do that here because I've got this list of classes that I might want to share with friends and family, or maybe I want to tell my friends and family on social media, "Check out this app. You might be interested in it." So we're going to add email and social sharing. This is going to be a plugin. It's going to be an extra feature. Over at cordova.apache.com, we have a list of the 10 or 18 or whatever basic plugins. Camera, vibration, what else? Sound? All of those basic plugins. But people create a bunch of plugins for a bunch of different features. Um, there is a central place to get them at. I forget where, where I forget the address, uh, but it's related to Node. Um, but here's how I would do this. I would simply do something like this. Um, barcode scanner Cordova. I'm going to do a search with the keyword Cordova and a feature I'm trying to add to my app. Um, sometimes you can search and get different results if you search for the keyword phone gap because sometimes people create plugins and such for Cordova slash phone gap and some people don't know that there's a Cordova and that there's a phone gap. It's technically to a degree the same thing but sometimes you get different results. Uh, and remember Taco is our version of Cordova. So we can try this actually. Go do a search barcode scanner Cordova and you're gonna see all these results. Here's a developer that created a phone gap Cordova plugin for barcode scanner. Here's someone else's NG Cordova barcode scanner. Here's someone else's from SitePoint. Here's someone else's from Telerik. So all of these people are creating their version of this tool. How do I know the good one? Well, I would need to go look at the I would need to go look at the version and read comments and maybe there's star ratings and all of that. <coughs> barcode scanner. We're not going to do barcode scanner in our project, but here's how we would add a barcode scanner. I can make this app that I can scan barcodes to, you know, set up my inventory. I could scan barcodes and save them to pouch to the database. If we wanted to add the barcode feature in 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 command prompt, we would type taco plugin add the name of this plugin like we did a while ago we did taco plugin 
add Cordova-plugin-camera, and it added the camera feature. We did a while ago, taco plugin add Cordova-plugin-notification, um, and that let us do notifications. It's in one of the handouts. And here, wherever you see anything that says Cordova or, ta or phone gap, just substitute it with taco. So we would type taco plugin add phone gap dash plugin dash bar barcode scanner, and now our app has the ability to read barcodes. How do you actually make it work? Read the rest of the documentation. But then the app can read barcodes. JavaScript code to read a barcode. So what about if I want Bluetooth Cordova? Bluetooth plugin Cordova. Here's one right here from Don. Here's another one from Rand Rand Randusing. So Bluetooth serial plugin for phone gap. This plugin enables serial communication over Bluetooth. It was written for communicating between Android or iOS and an Arduino. Okay, so actually this one might not be the most useful for all of us because this is to connect to an Arduino and not no plain old. If there's a plug-in for PongGap, basically it's going to be compatible with Cordova. Yes. Is that, is that a blanket statement? Pretty much, okay. yes. So same thing here. So this one's saying Cordova plugin add. So we would do taco plugin add Cordova dot dash plugin dash Bluetooth dash serial and now we have the ability to connect to Bluetooth. How do we then fully do it? Read the documentation. Because then you're gonna have Bluetooth serial dot write. Write data via Bluetooth. We would have Bluetooth serial dot enable. You know, enable it, I guess. So all the documentation is here. So, because, so if I understand the code Exactly. It's just that when we inst when we set this up via Node, we did install Taco on Node, so we got the Taco version. We could have done Node install PhoneGap, and we would get the PhoneGap version or the Cordova version. The Taco one is the most modern one, which is the most full featured. So that's why we're using it in this class. What's that? Same yeah, they're all connecting back to the same repository, back to the same server, and everyone's getting it. Either Taco, Cordova, or PhoneGap, they're all getting it from the same server. The one that we will work on, let's search for Social Sharing Cordova. And you should get a result from Eddie Verbruggen. Well, what about adding um, items for a calendar? Is there an API there for the calendar so you can add these classes into the calendar? Possibly. That one might be a little more complex because you have to think about where are you getting that calendar data from. So you have to, maybe the college provides some sort of API to tap into it. So I would need to check with the college IT department and say, hey, do you guys have, you know, do you, do you expose your, your calendar data somehow for me to tap into? And say, yes, here it is. Then I might need to find a plugin to deal with it, or it may just be in JSON format. And then I have to process that like we did <coughs> our, our database. So that one's going to be a bit of a harder answer. There's, that, there's, no, there's probably no plugin to fill, fill, fulfill that particular task. It's so specialized. Could we update our database, add fields per date, time? Because we're adding the classes already manually, mm -hmm. right? Yes. So we could then add maybe, but obviously it's a little more complicated. Than that. Yeah, there is a way that, uh, that, we can add, uh, that we can add dates and times. Uh, this thing will automatically, this device will, uh, is always keeping track of time. We can tap into that. We can query it at this moment down to the millisecond, and then we can save data. Instead of using ID of a CRN, we can use an ID of a time. 
and then there's always going to, then going to be a unique document tied to a time down to the millisecond. So we want to add social sharing, and this developer here, Eddie Verbergen, has a version of this. This is the one we're going to use. So let's go ahead and click on it. It's over on his GitHub account. Let's click there. And let's RTFM a little bit. We need to read the manual. Uh, so this is Cordova plugin to share. This can share text, a file, like a PDF, a URL, or all three of them, via the native sharing widget. And then further documentation there. So this works on Android, on iPhone, Windows Phone, everywhere. And what it does is, as we read the documentation and, and see the screenshots and such, this is a very good, very detailed documentation. You were gonna see, you know, on iPhone or Android, whatever, your app is running, you tap the share button, and then it'll pop up here depending on what the user has installed. If they've got LinkedIn, you will be able they will be able to share from your app to LinkedIn. They will be able to share to Twitter, to Snapchat, whatever. They're gonna be able to share based on what they have installed and we'll be able to have it to send an email too. Everyone's got these things always have email. So whatever the person has, and it's going to be cross-platform to you know iOS, the same app is running on an iPhone, they tap the share button that we will program, and it'll say, okay, great, you want to share it via AirDrop, iMessage, Twitter, whatever, and then there, we're going to be able to send a tweet directly from our app. What do we put in the tweet? You know, we can populate the tweet or the email whatever, in a variety of ways, which we'll see as we set this up. So screenshots working on all the platforms. There it is on Windows Phone. So every platform is going to be able to use this. Uh, how to install it. It's, we're going to do this one right here. Cordova, that is Taco, plugin, add, Cordova, plugin, blah, 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 blah. Taco, prepare and then it's ready. How do we actually do it? We will see how to do it down here in just a moment. Let's add this feature then to our project. Let's open up let's open up uh, uh, command prompt. If you're not there already, you're probably already there. Go to the command prompt uh, before we add the, the, the new plugin. Let's type um, Taco plugin. Press enter. This will give you a list of the plugins installed. A while ago, we added all the plugins, all the default, all the basic plugins. A while ago, we, we, we did Taco plugin add battery, camera, console, all of that. Remember, we copied and pasted. So we have all of these abilities. This is how we're able to check device. Remember when we want to check what's the version that's the version of our device? It's too old, don't show phone gap. That ability was a plug-in. So our device our app is able to use all of these features. We need to add a new feature. So let's type taco <coughs> plugin add space and then the In the documentation, Cordova dash plugin. Dash X dash social sharing one word. That is going to give our app that is going to give any taco based app the ability to do social sharing. That feature is not built in. Some uh, helpful soul out there created some software for us to do that, put it out there for free to the world. We can use it. That's why all of these developers are asking for donations, because people create a great little piece of code. It's really useful. Why not kick them a few, a few bucks for their effort?
press enter, if you typed it right, it's going to connect over to the main repository of code. You will see here eventually in, in the code in there somewhere. It's connecting to github. You see right there it says github.com slash jp richardson slash node fs extra. <clears throat> yeah, node.js, they they've become like sort of like an app store for code. People create code, upload it to Node, and then people can download it via this method and share share the code. Yeah, exactly. It does. It's one of the most important things to know nowadays, basically. So it's saying it's downloading the software, the plugin, it's adding it to our Android project and the browser. Although it's not going to work very well on the browser because it's the browser. But if we had done Taco Platform Add iOS, it would download the code, add the appropriate code to the iOS version of the project. And then when we do Taco Build iOS dash release, it would create the iPhone version of the project with social sharing ability. So because we're all connecting at the moment, it might take a moment to uh, it might take a moment to finish downloading. Eventually. If yours finishes and it goes back to the command prompt, it then says type taco prepare. Social sharing.js is brought in automatically. There is no need to change anything in your HTML. Taco prepare? What's that? Did it then work after that? Um, okay, let me try on mine here. I've got success. I'm going to do taco prepare. I'm not talking about passing it to Cordova. Okay, I'm going to keep waiting. Um, so probably work eventually. If this works then after this we will do taco platform one more time just to see. Oh, I've got a new, I'm sorry, not platform, plugin. When this is done, we will do taco plugin one more time just to see it's it's available. While that's processing, let me read the documentation a bit. How do you actually use it? How do you use it on iOS and Android? You can share text, a subject, in the case of, of an email, any type of location of a file, like an image. So if there's an image in the app or on the memory card, we can send that or a link. However, what exactly gets shared depends on the application the user chooses to complete. A few examples are, you can send an email through your app, which will take a message, a subject, and a file parameter. You can send via you can share via Twitter. The same plugin will let us send email <coughs> and share it to social media. <coughs> if we're gonna send a tweet from our app, we can send a message which is text, an image. Other file types are not supported, like PDFs and such, a link, which will get shortened. We can share to Google Plus, but only for Android, because it's Google Plus is Android, it's you know, it's Google. 
We can share to Flickr. We can share, you know, photos to Flickr. We can share to Android and to iOS. It's slightly different and quirky because Facebook itself has made it a little difficult to share to their network. Facebook wants you to, guess what, use the Facebook app to share on Facebook. So there is a few speed bumps here to get it to fully work. And here's the actual code example. For example, let's create a button on click, but we'll do this better. Uh, we have the actual code. Window.plugins.socialsharing.share message only. This will send a message like an email. We can do share. And we're just passing in different parameters in this particular order, as the documentation will explain. Like over here, I'm sending a link. But I have to say no, 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 and then link. Because we've got message, you know, subject, and image, and link. So as we, as we see how to do this, we'll see if we want to share a particular kind of in item, like if we want to share an image, it's the third position. So first position, comma, second position, comma, third position. We'll set this up in a moment. Here's an example. Sending a PDF. Let's say we, we create a PDF of the classes. We want to share that PDF on LinkedIn. Uh, we have some way, like a button, and the secret basically is window.plugins.socialsharing.share, some sort of subject, <coughs> message, and then the actual file. Inside the www folder, in my files folder, I've got a PDF. <coughs> How to share the code to share directly to Twitter, to Facebook. Instagram, WhatsApp, text message, email. Perks, excluding some options, etc. Okay, so eventually mine, it didn't say success or anything, but I'm going to confirm by type... No, but that success is for adding it. This success is for plugin add. I, didn't, I don't seem to have any result from taco prepare, but I'm going to confirm with taco plugin to list my plugins. Right there, social sharing. That's success. Did everyone get that social sharing plugin shown on the list? Yes. <clears throat> okay, so we have now the capability to do this. Let's see about setting this up to. First, we'll do to send an email. What we need is, of course, some sort of button as a trigger to send an email. Then we need to say, well, how, what are we going to send in this email? So we need to create a button somewhere in our app to send an email. Let's say, um, again, we could do this a variety of ways. The first way we'll do this is, um, let's say our app is so great, we want people that, that have our app to tell their friends about it. You know, there's going to be a button, share the app. Let your friends know about the app. And it's going to send an email to whoever they choose uh, with a link to the app or whatever we choose to share via email. Here's another way where we can do this, maybe more viably. We can set this up. Well, what if we have contact the developer? In the app, we have a screen that if something's wrong with the app, click here to send the developer an email. Maybe that might be a better way to do this. Send an email to the developer. So that's what we'll do. We'll have it set up so that we'll get an email from our app. Let's go into our WW folder of our project. Let's edit the index file. Do we want to make a, a new copy of the project folder? 
Ideally, yes, just in case. But what we're about to add here is not so intrusive that it might break other things. 1.2. 1.2 of the device of the of the project. Sure. I'm going to edit the index file. And I think over on the about screen. In the about screen, we could add a new button there. Contact the developer or contact us. So we need to find where that is at, and it's at line 256. On line 256, we're going to create a button to contact us as the developer. So we'll create the A tag. <coughs> Just as before, we've got a we've got a button. the a tag and inside of the a tag we will say contact us contact us href on that tag is nothing it's the dummy link data role so basically the line right above it's a button data icon uh, I always forget, is it mail or email? Let's start with mail first. We have an icon to s uh, for a little email icon. I, mean, I don't know if it's email or mail. Which, of course, I can easily check if I try. It is not mail. Is mail. Okay, so then uh, we need here an ID so that via JavaScript it knows that we click this to do something. We'll say ID equals BTN email. This is our button to send an email. Okay, let's save the index file. We've got a button. Let's move over to our JavaScript file to make this do something. Go ahead then and open kodika.external.js. Let's go to the end of our code. Let's go to line um, 152. We need to create the event handler. We need to create that trigger code for the button. So we've got dollar, just like we've been doing over and over. Uh, hash mark btn email. Right, that's the standard code to make that button pay attention, basically. Dot on, open close parentheses. Click, as always, comma. This one we don't, have to, we don't have to get fancy on this one because the the uh, the button exists at runtime, so it's simply just click here. Space function parentheses curly braces, just like we've done over and over. And we're going to say let's run a function. After we click this button, and we'll call this uh, email us function. So we have to define what does email us do.
Okay, so this should um, give us a button that once we click, it'll send, it'll give us the functionality to send an email. Inside of the function of email us, we need window dot plugins, that's plural, dot social sharing. The documentation, I'm getting this out of the documentation, and this gives us the ability to share uh, in a variety of ways. We want to focus on it sharing or sending, <coughs> sending an email. So further we'll say dot share via capital V email capital E open close parentheses semicolon. This is the basic JavaScript code coming from the programmer Eddie Ver Ver Verbuggen. Um, this is the basic code to share via email that then Cordova will translate into the appropriate Android code, iPhone code, whatever. This needs, however, a bunch of parameters, a bunch of options inside of the parentheses. This is again all coming basically from the uh, from the documentation, but we'll do this. Uh, in this parentheses, let's cut the parentheses into two lines. Press enter twice to cut it into two lines because we're going to write it a bunch of parameters here, and I want to separate them into separate lines just so that we can see it and understand what's there. Let's uh, let's do this basic syntax first between the two parentheses. Let's type null, comma, null, comma, null, comma, null, comma, I've got six nulls, all separated by commas. After the sixth null, I'll type it. It's not the last one yet. Function results curly braces, comma, function error, curly braces. And no, and no final comma. It's the last item <coughs> of the parameters. So that's why we separated this into separate lines. This could have been one long line, but it would be hard to read. This plugin, Eddie, when he invented it, set it up so that it would take these options, these parameters. Whenever we do share via email, we have to tell the system six parameters, then there's a built-in, uh, two built-in callbacks, like pouch. Remember there was the error callback and the good <coughs> result callback. When Eddie programmed this, he did it in this syntax. The pouch people did it in a different syntax. Remember it was the error first and the result second, I think? And here is result first and error second. Well, again, read the documentation. Why? Because that's how they programmed it. But we have all of these parameters, and then either a positive result or a negative result to deal with. The first field here, we can add some comments, actually, to help us. After the comma here, let's add a, a one-line comment. And what this one here is um, message. This is, uh, this is the body of the email. This next one here is the subject of the email. Next is the to field. Who is this being sent to? According to the documentation, must be an array. 
So it's got to be in square brackets. Square brackets and quotes. Actually, all of these are in quotes, so it might not matter. Um, then um, this next one is the CC field, carbon copy. You can have this, someone clicks this button to send an email to the developer, and it also gets <coughs> sent to someone else. It'll copy this message to someone else. The next line is the BCC field. Anyone know what the BCC is? Blind, Blind carbon copy. So uh, no one will know who else you sent this email to. People will know who else you sent it to if you do CC. It'll pop open the person's email app and it'll say to developer at victorapps.com comma john at victorapps.com if I put someone in the CC field. If I then put Janet at victorapps.com in the CC field, no one will know that Janet got that email. And these are also arrays. We have to do it also in square brackets. And lastly here, these are files or attachments. And these can be local or external. That is, if I've got a PDF in one of the folders of my project, here's my project. And what if I have a folder in here of PDFs? I can attach that PDF to this email. What if I have a document on a server? I can also attach it here. That's another array. <coughs> it could be an array as well. Uh, the documentation says uh, can be null, a string, or an array. So you can attach multiple files actually in an array. So this is the syntax of, of this email sharing feature. That means then we need to populate this. If you're not going to use a field, you should put null. The documentation says if you're not going to use BCC, don't omit BCC. Leave it null, or else the plugin will get confused thinking, oh, you're putting a file in this field instead of BCC. We need to, that's why we wrote it this way, because we're going to need to have something in each of these positions, and if we are not going to use it, we need null, lowercase. So instead of having a null message as a string, so quotes, we can put whatever here. We can pre-populate this message. The person will be able to, to change the message of their email, of course. But we can automatically start to fill something in here. So let's say um, we're writing question about your app. And then the break tag. We have a limited amount of HTML tags we can add here. Break is one of them. So it will write, it'll pull up the email, it'll automatically fill in on the first line of this of the message. It'll write question about your app. Break, so a new line below it. And then the person can continue to write. Or they can delete this if they want. We can leave it empty. We can leave it null. And they'll write whatever they want there. We need a subject. Or we can leave it so that they can put their own subject. But what if I've got this set up? What if I've got a specific email account where I'm accepting all complaints? So I'm going to put in, you know, complaints or kudos. I'm going to put here perhaps a pre-populated subject so I can filter it. So I can have multiple 
of these email things on one screen, you know, click here to send us a compliment, click here to send us a complaint, and then I can put different sharing code and change this as I want. But let's say I'm going to write here my SDCE feedback. That'll automatically be filled into the subject, which they can add to or delete. But what if I'm a developer, I have many apps out there, and I'm using one email for everyone to give me feedback. If I pre-populate this, I'll be able to filter my email so that all the emails about this app go to their own folder, and so forth. So if I do not fill in an email here, the person has to select. This then could be used, like I was saying earlier, what if we set this up for, uh, for letting people share this app with their friends and family via email? Don't fill that in and you'll let them choose their friends and family's emails. What I want is whenever someone clicks this to have it sent to my developer's email account. This needs to be a, an array. So you want to put the um, square brackets of an array and then inside the square brackets, the quotes. Now I did put single quotes there, double quotes, single quotes shouldn't matter, but I'll just keep it the same there as the comment. It doesn't matter as long as you're consistent. And right here, let's say I have um, a developer, my developer's account, you know, Victor Dev at VictorApps.com. You can put a, to fully test this, why not put your real email? Because when we actually test it, you will get an email to fully test it. This is a fake email address here. Um, so I'm not really going to see the result. I'm going to change it to a real email in just a moment. But that's the syntax then for sending, the, sending this to someone. I'm going to leave these two optional. I don't really need to CC it to anyone or BCC it, so I'll leave them no. They can choose the user can choose to CC this to someone or BCC it. They can choose if they still want to. <coughs> and then if I want to attach a file, just for fun, let's attach a file. Uh, the quirk about this, that this is, this is based on the root of the project, not the root www folder. So what I'm saying here is, if I wanted to, for some reason, to send the the uh, the jQuery file as an attachment, I would not write the code as you know jQuery.min.js. I would write it as www.jQuery.min.js because this is looking from this level here. This plugin, for some reason, is like living right here. And therefore, we need to specify the www folder, or any of these other folders, specify the www folder, and then in the www folder, I've got jQuery. Just to see if this works, let's attach an image. Um, programs. So our code would be www. This is in quotes. Yes, but we're not sending the jQuery file. We're doing This is a forward slash. It is a directory that's the forward slash in HTML. Um, so we've got www, then we've got images slash programs dash jpeg. That's a typo. Images, yes, programs, images. So then this should attach that graphic in this directory in the www folder. If this were out on some website, obviously then, http colon slash slash mysite.com slash whatever. It's attaching, if I've got some sort of boilerplate image that I need to send for some reason, I can get it off of a web server with a fully qualified path. 
if my server were set up that way. However, my server set up. Uh, so when you talk about local storage, are you talking about uh, anything within the www directory or local storage? If I wanted to do local storage, I would have to do not in quotes local storage dot whatever we're calling this thing, my name or whatever it is. Not in quotes, because in quotes is a string. It will literally attach that, which is gibberish. This is an actual local storage variable, which we defined elsewhere up there, I guess, and then attaching that, which that still might not work because that's just text. Um, so this is more of an attachment, you know, a JPEG file, a PDF file. But in theory, what if we're saving in local storage graphics? You could do it that way. The validity of an email address is right here. This email that you're adding here has to be correct because you're sending this to yourself. Yes, but what if set up so that they could type in email address. We, that's out of our hands. If we, if we left this as null and they can add their own email, it's up to them to type it correctly. It's up I'm to them. That they would have a form and they would put an email address in and maybe it's so different to That's the interface. Mm -hmm. But they just typed in an email address. Isn't, isn't, doesn't JavaScript handle Data validation, JavaScript can handle data validation. Yes, that would require, you know, to get a to get okay. to get some snippet of JavaScript code to handle that to make sure you're only accepting email addresses. But if you are using a form, and remember we have input type equals text, we have the new input type equals email, and it should only let people add an email. So that's a way to do a little bit basic validation there. But the way we're doing it here, we're assuming it's being sent to the right person. Function results and function error. A little bit of basic, uh, you know, um, callback results. So just for to see something perhaps here uh, inside the curly braces, we'll do a console log output. Just show me what the result is in the console show me the result. And I'm going to do the same thing for the error in the console show the error. Obviously I should probably add a little bit more there to explain what I'm seeing in the console such as um, success fail. Remember that? We've done variations on that before. This plugin is trying to do something. It will either succeed or fail. And that information is stored in this variable. We're passing it to the synonymous function. The result of the success or the result of the error. Let's display that in the console. Simply, what is that? It might be it might be a JSON object, it might simply say OK, it might say fail or something. I'm going to see that in the console. <coughs> and uh, that uh, should be it. That should be it for, for that. We did type it manually ourselves, which of course we could be prone to errors. Basically what I did was, spoiler, I just went in here and copied one big block of, of an example. I took it right out of here, right there. What we did is this. If you scroll down to find email, what we did is basically that. Just a little nicer, maybe. See in their example here, they're attaching two images. A Google image, comma, a local image on their on in the app. Right here, they're sending it to two people at once in the array and a CC. They did it slightly different by actually creating a function called onSuccess instead of the way we did it as an anonymous function that just happens at that moment. Let's see if it works now. 
you will need to run this on a virtual or real device. Uh, and again, depending on what the device features has. If you've got Facebook on this, then one of the options would be Facebook. If we did it that way, we're doing it on email. This assumes the device has some, for, some, form, of, some form of email. On the virtual device, it may not fully work. It may try to work, but you don't have an email set up, so we'll see. If you try to run this on the browser, I don't think it'll work at all because it's not designed for that. So I'm going to make sure everything is saved. In Notepad, do a file save all, just in case. I didn't change anything in the config file. If you did, you can save it, but uh, I didn't really change anything yet. It doesn't matter yet. We're not submitting it to the App Store yet. But I'm doing save all. Going back to command prompt, taco run Android, in my case. I might do taco emulate Android. Actually, let me cancel that. Let me set this for a real email address. I just want to, don't want to record my real e email address here, so let me change that to a real email address. So I'm getting a weird error here, but I'm going to just do taco build, and sometimes this happens even to me, that it doesn't want to behave on the first try that I do it, and I maybe do it slightly different, and plug it in, unplug it, and then it, I don't know, wakes it up and it works. So let's see what happens here. Let me just do a build first, and then I'll do a run and see what happens. These are computers. They only know yes or no. Huh. Exactly. Zero or one, on or off. But they seem to uh, eventually get with the program. Pun intended. Oops, still doing an error. Hmm. Not a useful error at all. Your beans out. Your beans out. What's that? Your beans out. Your beans out. Where? On success of that function. Beans out. In the end, it'll be That's down. true. I did put result rather than results. Uh, In the end, it will be down. Yes. That shouldn't be the problem. Yeah, put result instead of results. That shouldn't be the problem. Did anyone else get an error or anyone get a result, a real result? Is that working for you almost, Cheryl? Well, those I mean, I'm there, but I have to type in my email address, but it has the attachment, it has everything else, but cool. I'm getting, because I had, well, I went to, uh, yeah, well, agency.net, mm -hmm. so I had to type in there. You mean you, you had to select an email address? Yeah, I had to type in my email address, but then everything populated. I'm not sure. I don't know. Okay, well. It's populated and such. Have you tried to send an email? Have you finished it by sending it? Well, okay, that was, even though this is a real phone, that would work, yeah. If you, if you do have an email, an email account set there.
And did it work for you by doing directly Taco Run Android, or did you have to do Build first? Let's see here. I closed Node completely, started it over. Let's see what I get here. If it doesn't work on mine, I would have to work a little bit backwards. I would cut out the code that I added and, you know, check my code again. Um, trying to eliminate the possibilities because I added basically two things to my code. I added the button in the HTML and I added the JavaScript in the JavaScript. I suppose there could have been a problem. No. Oh. Great. So that's a pretty good endorsement that it worked. Has anyone else tried to get there? Everything's there, so it's it is in your in, in the box, in the sent. Did you send it to the same email address? Yeah. Okay, it might be working now. There. Let's see. Question, Lawrence. Like a like a text message. We will we, we are able to send it via text messages if we somewhere here right here is SMS text message. Uh, so there is a way to send it over here. We would do share via SMS. If we did share via email, there's share via SMS. So you see your build is working now. Now have you heard that the classic expression? Madness is doing the same thing over and over and expecting different results. I so many times have done the same thing over and over on computers and it works. So who's the mad one? But my build seems to be working. I restarted it. And that's always an answer, isn't it? Have you tried turning it on and off? Okay, now I got it. You got the email? Yeah. There we go. So as soon as mine shows up here, we can confirm it there. But we've got at least one person, at least one good student that has been following along and getting it to work. Okay, it's getting there and select whatever it whatever it lets you there. You still probably won't be able to go that far because on the on the simulator it's not fully functional. Because there's no there's no real email address attached. Okay, so build worked. Taco run Android device.
So this is, uh, you know, this waiting time is part of the part of the deal. But the better computer that you have, more RAM and all of that, the smoother it goes. Okay, so it's launching. Okay, so on my real device, and my screen's cut off, but on my real device I've got the contact us button, I'll tap that. I might have misspelled. I'm pressing my button, mine's not coming up, but I might have just misspelled something. So I would be checking this maybe in the browsers to see console output. So it worked for at least one person. Um, mine's got a little snag. Oh, really? Cool. So maybe other people are getting that as well. So we have at least one person whose app is live on the App Store. We have one person <laughs> who's, who's uh, got the email working, so we're on our way. Um, obviously, I want to show it here, but I might be having one little snafu. But, uh, you know, in theory, this is all working, isn't it? It's working for, for a few of us, so it's all working. You know, we are kind of out of time, and I do want to fix this, but we're kind of out of time. Uh, let's assume it's working, you know, it's working for, for, for several of us, a few of us here. Uh, this is on our way, when we come back next week, to finish version 2 of the project. By that time, we should have our apps live. And we need to add extra features like this email and the Twitter sharing and all of that. And then we'll go through the process of submitting version 2 and other things. And then that'll be the, the last week next week. Any general questions on what we've done so far? Uh, again, uh, if you have the time, I recommend come tomorrow, 9.15 a.m., this room, for the, um, for the, for the YouTube video editing lecture in the social media app. So that's it for the moment. I'll see if I can wrap up my code here and put a copy into the folder and then
wrap it up and see you next time.